Hello everyone. Um, so this is me and Hunter's project. Um, there is Hunter right here. And today our game that we came up with is called Ninja Thrower. Um, so it's very similar to shooting darts. Um, so Hunter has a bucket of 10 balls in that container. And what he's gonna be trying to do from where he is sitting in that seat is toss um, the ball in onto this dart sheet that we have set up. So how the scoring works a little bit is gonna be um, if he can make any of the flag numbers, that will reveal how many points he gets, okay? Um, these white poly spots are each worth one point and the orange flags here are each worth mystery boxes. So if Hunter were to hit those, um, those are gonna be um, point values that are a mystery. And the very back ring here is the grandfather shot. Um, this is like for all the fireworks. If you were to make this um, into that hole, that would be worth 15 points. And so um, here's a little score sheet of how this is gonna look. So our title here is Ninja Thrower. Um, each round, for a total of three rounds, he's gonna be going through um, 10 different shots. But for today, we're just gonna show you um, what one round would look like, and then we're gonna total up that round right here. Um, and so our student would go through this three times and then see which round he got the most points on. All right, so as Hunter is about to throw, um, I'm gonna keep the video recording. Um, and as he makes it in the video, I'm gonna call out how many points that was worth um, so you all can still see, all right? So one little second here so we can get set up. All right, three, two, one, and go. All right, so I don't know if Brady mentioned though, but the red solo cups are worth 10 if you get it oh, inside yeah. the red solo cup. Yeah, so the red solo cups are worth 10, and I don't remember if I mentioned this earlier. Also, this is for a student um, who is non-ambulatory, meaning they're in a wheelchair, um, and they require a wheelchair, or they're just non-ambulatory. All right, so here we go. Go ahead. All right, so that landed on none of the spots, so that's going to be worth zero. Okay. Round two. Oh, he landed on mystery. All right. So mystery, that one was worth seven points. So for round two, I'm going to write seven. And round three, eight. Nice job. So round three, I put an eight. And round four. Oh, that got nothing, so that'd be zero. Round five, nothing, so that would be a zero. Round six, nice. So that was worth 10 points. So this is what he's got so far. Round one, zero, two, seven, three, eight, four, zero, five, zero, and six, 10. So he's got four more shots. Round seven, zero. Round eight, uh, zero. Round nine, nice, he got one. And this is his last shot. Round 10, he going for the grand Oh, he just almost made another 10, but that is uh, zero. All right, so we got zero plus seven is seven. Seven plus eight is 15. 15 plus 10 would be 25. 25 plus one is a total of 20 six points that he got um so there's my math and hunter got a 26. now hunter is going to talk to you guys about some modifications and extensions all right so for some modifications for a student that is struggling we can move this chair closer to make it so easier move it up. for them to throw yep we can remove the cups because those are a smaller target and replace them with either more flags or maybe even more poly spots so it would be easier for them to score more. Um, for a student that is finding a lot of success, we can move back and make it farther. We can eliminate the flags and just make it the uh, cups that they have to aim for. That would make it harder. And I think that's 
Yep, and you can also change um, the size of the balls that you are throwing. Yeah. Um, so also in this game, we had a variation. So these um, were harder to throw, but at the same time, they would go into the um, spots that are worth 10. Um, while these kind of balls were worth, um, were, were easier to throw, but they would make it harder to make it into the ones that are 10. So there's a little bit of variability um, in this. If we wanted, um, you could modify the, uh, and you could add like maybe a small laundry basket, like a wider size laundry basket that you could put right here, or a really small basket that you could throw into. That would be easier for them to throw into. Yep. Uh, you could put it anywhere on this mat. We kind of use this mat as a target just to put all of our stuff in. Uh, uh, yeah, and then also, um, I just wanted to add that we added that basket um, when Hunter was sitting in the chair, so that was on his lap. Um, and so the student that is sitting in a wheelchair would not have to constantly, you know, bend over, bend over, bend over, um, and move so much in order to get the next ball. All right, thanks for listening to our activity day, and have a great day. All right, so that was our um, presentation on Ninja Thrower, and I also wanted to add three other details to that. Um, so if a student um, is unable to throw, um, you could make a catapult um, in order um, to so that they can still access that game um, for a modification. Um, you could also um, on that black um, circle tarp that um, these objects were sitting on, you could use Velcro um, and just have all the objects stick onto it via Velcro. Um, otherwise, you could have a, um, a cardboard cutout um, for different targets as well. All right, so those are three little uh, modifications that we would add to that. All right, thank you.